Virtual machines, just like physical computers, require an operating system to be installed, and that does take time. Now, hypervisors like Proxmox VE can save you a lot of time because they allow you to create templates. So rather than creating a new virtual machine and then installing an operating system every single time, instead what you do is to create a template and then you use that template to create your virtual machines. And that way you completely skip the whole process of having to install the operating system. But how do you actually create templates in Proxmox VE and how do you use them? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video because that's what we'll be going over. Now, a template is basically a virtual machine that we'll be cloning other virtual machines from. And while you can obtain pre-built templates, it is better to create your own because then you know what software is being installed. So the first thing we need to do is to create a virtual machine that will have the operating system we want to use, but it's also got common settings that the other virtual machines will inherit. So first thing to do is click Create VM. Now, I'm going to be creating an actual Debian template. So I'm just going to call it actual Deb template to make it a bit easier to identify. What I can do is I can change the ID here. So for example, if I set this to 500, it should appear much lower down the list. Now, what I actually set this to really depends, but this is just a lab um, Proxmox VE server. So I don't expect that many uh, virtual machines on this computer anyway. So 500 should be enough to keep this template right at the bottom of the list. Then click on next. I need to pick out the Debian operating system to install on this. I'll click on next. I'm not going to change any of these default settings, but again, these are settings that all the other virtual machines we create going forward will inherit. So if you wanted to make any changes to these, do that now. I don't, so I'm just going to click next. Same goes to the disks. I could add more disks if I wanted them, but I don't, so I'm just going to click next. I'm going to set the number of CPU cores to two. And I'm just going to leave the default setting of two gig for memory. For the actual network setup, well, this is going to change probably depending on the actual uh, virtual machines you build later on, but you can set a common setting if you like. So for example, maybe all of the virtual machines I build uh, from the actual template will be in VLAN 200, for example. So I can set that here and now, and it just saves me having to make that change later on. And then click on next, confirm my settings. Now that gives me my base virtual machine. I've now got to install the actual operating system, which is going to take time. So I'll do that. And then once it's ready, we'll pick up from there. Once the operating system is installed, you'll want to configure any common settings that should apply to all of your virtual machines, as well as to install any additional software as well. That way you can save yourself some additional time when you're creating virtual machines. So in the case of this Debian Linux computer, for example, I installed the actual OpenSSH server during the install process, but I've since installed sudo and ufw, and I've configured the actual firewall to restrict SSH access to only management computers. So you'll want to do something similar with Windows computers as well, probably including installing antivirus software. But once you've got everything installed and you're happy with that virtual machine, you'll want to shut the actual virtual machine down. Having said that, when it comes to Windows computers, you will want to run sysprep. That way, each virtual machine can end up with its own unique system identifier. Now that I'm finished with this virtual machine, one final thing that I'm going to do is just remove any connectivity to the existing ISO file that was used to create it. And then what we now need to do is to convert this virtual machine into an actual template. So to do that, we go to more and select convert to template. It just asks one final time. I'm sure you want to convert this virtual machine into a template. So I'll click yes to say I do. And it's now converted this into a template. So you can see one slight difference is in the little icon that you get just to the left. With a virtual machine, you just see a little PC next to it or a monitor, if you will. Whereas here you've got a kind of like a little document page just next to it. But it means we've now actually got a template that we can use to create our other virtual machines from. So now going forward, if I want to create a virtual machine 
which is based on the Debian operating system. Instead of clicking Create VM and then going through that whole process of installing the operating system each time, what I can do is select my template here, click on More, and then Clone, and fill in the details for this particular VM. So I only have one node in this test lab, so we'll leave that as is. I'm happy to stick with the actual VM ID that it's picked out, but I do need to give it a unique name, so I'll just call it Dev Test, for example. I've got a choice of a link clone or a full clone. Now, there's all sorts of issues you could run into with a link clone. For example, if the actual template were to get damaged, if changes were made to the actual template, that can have big problems for the virtual machines, even so far as any virtual machine which is linked to the template may no longer work. So unless you're really strapped for resources or you're running in a lab, for example, a full clone would probably make more sense because it's completely independent of the actual template. It doesn't matter what happens to this template once this virtual machine has been built because it's totally independent of it. So yes, it does save resources, but there are risks associated with it that you need to bear in mind. I've also got a choice to pick a different target storage if I wanted to. Otherwise, by default, it just goes into the same location where the actual template's currently being stored. But either way, once I've made up my decisions here, I can click on clone and then off it'll go and I'll actually clone that actual template to give me a new virtual machine, which should be running the Debian operating system in this case. Well, this virtual machine is now up and running, although the actual cloning process was extremely quick. As you can see, because I set up the original virtual machine to block SSH access and only allow access from management computers, this virtual machine and all virtual machines that I create going forward will have those same restrictions. But although when I created this virtual machine and gave it a name of dev test within Proxmox VE, that has no impact on the actual operating system. So I do still need to do that. Every time I create a new virtual machine, I'm going to have to update the hosts file and the host name file in the case of Linux. You have to do something similar for an actual Windows computer. I could, if I wanted to, give this computer its own unique static IP address so I could edit the actual network settings, or I could actually just leave it on DHCP and then reserve an IP address through DHCP if I wanted to. The good thing is I don't really have to worry about MAC addresses because if you go back to an actual template, you can see that this network card starts with a MAC address of A to E, whereas this new virtual machine we've created starts with one which is BA. So it does get its own unique MAC address through that actual cloning process. But what this means now is going forward, I can create virtual machines much, much quicker than if I was just going through this normal process of creating a virtual machine from scratch. Well, thanks for making it to the end of this video. I really do hope you found it useful. If so, then do click the like button and share as that'll help get the video out to more people who might find it useful as well. If you've got any comments or suggestions, please post those in the comments section below. And if you're new to the channel and you'd like to see more content like this, then yes, do subscribe. Just remember to set the bell icon to actually send you notifications when new content gets released. Although I also post to Twitter as well as Facebook. If you'd like to help the channel and support it, you can actually make contributions through PayPal and buy me a coffee. I've also got links to Patreon and there's also the join membership option for YouTube itself. Patreon and YouTube members do have the option to actually benefit from early access as well. But above all, many thanks for watching this video. I'll see you in the next one.